Because you know what, you can study, you can have all the books, but to work on the floor, that gives you the experience. Yeah. I'm not in the business to make you rich. I'm in the business to structure your portfolio. I'm in the business to give you a balanced lifestyle. Okay, cool. What's up guys? How are you guys doing? It's Mobile Tambani here from Top Traders South Africa and today guys I'm bringing you guys a little bit of a treat, a little bit of a different uh, perspective to the markets and how the markets are being traded out there. Today I'm sitting down with somebody who's been in the game for a very long time, probably more years than I've been on this earth. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting here with Frick Hobler. That's right. Yes. How are you doing? Very good in yourself. I am great. I'm great. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home, uh, for us to come and talk about your story, where you come from, uh, how you started, and and basically just like I was saying earlier on, like you've got experience, and that's something that people can't buy, but obviously people can learn from the stuff that you're gonna say today, and I'm hoping that a lot of people will be able to look and watch and listen and be like, nah, learn something Wonderful. from uh, Mr. Frick Hobler. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Nico Belli. Thank you very much for uh, picking me <laughs> and also for the opportunity to be with you guys. Mm. It's really a pleasure. I always say to my friends and my family, you know, we've got a love of, for, for people. Mm. And I think that's why I actually went into the insurance side. Mm. You know, uh, there's always an ad on the TV. And I don't know if you guys saw that ad of the lady uh, she was actually looking for, a, for, a, for work. And then her in-laws asked her on, when they had supper together, what kind of work are you doing? She had a big piece of bread in her mouth. She said, oh, no, no, because she doesn't want to tell them what she did. That was actually me. You know, I've been an engineer for many years. I studied, studied engineering and I worked for the SABC for five years and then I went to ESCO mm. and uh, and then after that, I worked for ISCO for about three and a half years. But the reason why I actually uh, tell you the story of the bread is that when they ask me about insurance, that I was like that person. They ask, what kind of work are you doing? I say, oh, insurance. Because you know what? You like those years, insurance was like everybody can go into the insurance field. People that have got not a job, uh, they will go and sell policies. Mm. But today is a very more professional work and, and I think it's giving advice. Now to come back about my experience of where I come from, yeah, it was, it was a nice ex uh, a road to travel on, on the electronic side and, and with the SABC, we, we actually started with the television. Yeah. As, as I said to Nkubele, when I look at television now, it's so much more better, but uh, we also do some training work for, for East Corp, three and a half years. And then after the three and a half years, in 94, I actually started to work for my, my father-in-law in an in engineering company as a consulting engineer. And I spent five and a half years with him. And that's where I actually learned business. Mm. Because you know what? You can study, you can have all the books, but to work on the floor, that gives you the experience. Yeah and pick up the experience of people. Now, to work for an for a employer, I decided, listen, I want to work for myself. Even for your in-laws, <laughs> you, <laughs> you'll never get to the top. Yeah. So I decided, listen, I resigned. End of 1989, I resigned okay. as an engineer. And then I was, 1991, I was actually jobless, no income, no nothing. So it, it was quite a situation uh, coming from 80,000 and a month Mm. And the 1st of January 1990, Sorry. I was so earning were, nothing. You were making 80,000 rand a month. Those years. Sure. Uh, so, and you know what? We, it was mm. good money. It was yeah. really good money. We, we did well. Yeah. But 1st of January 1990, I was earning nothing. Yeah. And standing under my shower, I said, jobless, no career. What am I going to do? 
And my wife, luckily for those years, she was an art teacher. She had her own art studio. And um, yes, that's the time when I actually received my children as well, my, my son, yeah. Frederick. Yeah. Uh, on my poorest time of my life, I received him. Yes, but you know what? Slowly but surely, you did a lot of different things uh, in the market. And my comrade's, my comrade's partner, he was a German, he actually invited me to join Sunlam those years. Okay. And I joined Sunlam in 92, 91, 92, and uh, as an insurance broker with the attitude, oh, policies. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't want to say policies. But yeah. if I look back today, I think that's the best career. You know what? To be in. I don't want to be a dentist, I don't want to be a doctor, because I don't want to be an attorney. Actually, I had a design when I was at school to become a, a lawyer. But if I look at the lawyers today, they battle. It's a, it's a battlefield out there. Mm. You know what? And also with your uh, attorneys, it's a, it's a tough, and, 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 and dentist guys, it's, it's a tough career. You have to sit in, uh, every day in, in, in your practice. With the love of people, we built slowly, but surely we built the practice up. Yeah. And now, Nukubela, I also say that if they ask me, who's the CEO of your company? I say, God is my CEO. Mm. Because everything is coming back to the Lord. Every policy, every business that I've got in my, my, my business is basically from, from God. He blessed me with a lot of people. We, we got about 800 to 1,000 clients mm -hmm. on the books. Uh, we structured differently. We, we got uh, insurances that we sell, basically, and we got an investment portfolio, uh, medical aid, mm -hmm. a pension fund for the small SMEs. Uh, I do PI covers, specialized field team, uh, product liabilities, pollution liabilities for companies. So, yeah, but... Love of people. Yeah. And that's why I call my business other people's, people's money. money. Yes. <laughs> because if I can look after your money, mm -hmm. I can win your heart. And the first thing that you must do in your business, and I say that to my children as well, and also my staff, you first start to work on the heart of a man. Mm -hmm. Once you win his heart, you've got his whole portfolio. You've mm -hmm. got all his wealth yeah. in your hands. Sure. And that's what we're doing at the moment. Wow. Hi, my name is Damien Bunce and I'm the Chief Trading Officer at Exness. I want to talk to you about some of the advancements we've made in our product and our services that have propelled us to the number one position as a broker in terms of volume and active traders. We strive to create the optimal marketplace for our clients and that means deep and rich liquidity. It means low and stable spreads at any time of the day or night. It also means minimizing slippage at all possible moments in time. By the end of 2022, we plan to double our investment in our infrastructure, our people, and our product line in order to keep us exceptionally competitive and continue to add fantastic advancements for our clients. Reaching the number one position was just the first step for us. There is plenty more to come. Powerful. Yeah, so, gee, like you, you guys really do do a lot uh, from insurance to a, basically a lot. Like, I'm, I'm, like, stunned right now, and as much as we spoke earlier on, but, like, right now that you just got into all of it, you know, but, like, why other people's money? I think you've kind of answered that, you know, basically people's hearts goes down to people's hearts. Like, why do you think you're in the position to deal with other people's money? And you know, it's also very uh, responsible. You know what? Insurance is not just a, uh, a paperwork thing. I mean, it, it's a responsibility that you've got on your hands. Mm. You know, the client bases that we, we actually build up in our business. I mean, those, those guys was becoming, I specialized actually with the attorneys and advocates in my years when I moved into the insurance business. Uh, yeah. Today, they 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 senior counsels, they great business guys, but it also it took me a lot of time to build a relationship. Now, there's so much that they're part of me as a family. They're part of OPM as a family. You know, when they, there's a problem in the house, they phone me. Mm. Before they even phone the pastor. Huh? 
You have to be a psychologist, you have to be a doctor, you have to be an insurance guy, yeah, because yeah. they phone you. Yeah. If, if, any, if, if a person dies in a family, they'll phone the insurance guy. Mm -hmm. before, actually, before they phone Afbop or what, they say, listen, the policy is many here. Where's my will? Yeah. And you know what? Your will is a very important factor. If we talk about investments, yes, investments is, is much like an important side of, of insurances. But I think when you start out, everybody needs a will. You've got camera equipment, you've got a business. You have to say, listen, we, you, you guys are building up a business. What's going to happen with my business if I pass away? Mm -hmm. Have you guys, I don't know if you're, a, you're in a partnership here, have you got a partnership agreement? Mm -hmm. Because remember, there's debts to, to pay off. Mm -hmm. There's um, cost involved in a business, mm -hmm. so you definitely you have to have a partnership agreement that if one partner dies or passed away, that you've got sufficient funds mm -hmm. to take the business up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your business will die. Or, you know what, the creators will come and just cash in and, yeah. and finish. They take all the money for them. That's a, that's a big part. So make sure that you've got a, a proper will in place for your family, I mean, already you've got assets. If you're not here, what's going to happen to your assets? Yes, and especially when you've got family and children. Uh, you know, they say that if you, uh, if you haven't got a will, you will actually, your whole estate will go interstate. Now, it takes normally about two years for the, for, for the master to wrap up your estate. Mm. If you haven't got a, a will, it's going to take ages. It could maybe 20 years. So can you imagine if you've got a property or a few couple of houses, 20 years before your children can, can say, listen, this is my property. Yeah. So make sure that your will is in place. Mm. That's basically the first part when you start yeah. uh, on, on, on the will side. You know, we are, we're talking about dealing with other people's money. But I'll tell you right now, in the Forex uh, South African industry, we've got this chain right now of people. Uh, taking other people's because you know trading right now is very accessible right now anyone can trade at this point but we've got this trend right now of people taking other people's money saying send me your money I'll trade it for you <laughs> you know it happens it happens so many times right now but but then you are somebody who's actually qualified to actually take people's money legally right so how did you uh, attain the qualifications for all that or get to that point of being like hey give me your money i can do it legally for you you know we do we actually dealing with quite a lot of fund managers my biggest portfolio uh, if i look uh, we got basically about 400 million under asset management mm -hmm. uh, but it's not me that's running the RAP funds. Mm. Uh, it's my, I always say, I'm not a, a credited broker. I used to be many years say, to tell you, listen, you can buy that share and that shares. But today you, you have to have the accreditation and license to say, listen, buy Sussel shares. I, I can tell you, but yeah. you can actually take me to court if, if that share is not performing. So my job as an investor okay. is to find the best fund manager out there. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of fund managers. So what we do, we sit with the fund managers, mm -hmm. we deal with them on a basis, like a, a weekly basis. Uh, they invite us and, 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 and you know what, we know exactly what is the vision of that specific fund manager in the market. Mm -hmm. You know, we work with Alan Grays, we work with the Coronations, I work with PS, PSG, I work with Resco, I work with Truffle, I work with Salem uh, Inflation Funds. It's not like the old days, you know the old days, there was three portfolios. Yeah. Salam Mutual and Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you like the best? You like the blue blue jackets? Yeah. You go to Salam. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you're a, if you're a Jew guy or whatever, if, if, the, most of the English guys they went and the <coughs> Jewish guys they like the Liberty side. Okay. And uh, and the old mutual was old fashioned. Mm. I think they still a little bit old fashioned old <laughs> mutual. They had the green jackets. Yes. So that was an old story, and they only got a stable fund, a moderate fund. Uh, and, and basically aggressive funds. That's what you can pick off. Mm. But these days, it's a different ball game. It's a total different ball game. So I rather would say, instead of, you know, I phone you up and say, listen, Meneer, send me 100,000. I'm going to invest it on, a, on Bitcoin or uh, cryptocurrencies yeah. because you're going to make much. You're going to make money. Mm. We're not chasing money. What we, and I always say to my, my people as well, I'm not in the business to make you rich. Mm. I'm in the business to structure your portfolio. I'm in the business to give you a balanced lifestyle. I'm in the business to make sure 
that you can retire on the end mm. and not sit. Because if you don't start to, to save right now, yeah. you know, Einstein, the, he said the seventh uh, wonder uh, of, of investments is basically compound interest. Mm -hmm. So when you start young, you can generate that compound interest. Mm -hmm. And you will be amazed what it will pay out on the end. Mm -hmm. There's an example that I always use to my clients as well. When I left the South African broadcast, uh, SABC, um, I took my pension fund up because I bought a house and I had no furniture to sit on. <laughs> so it was amazing. So I said, listen, they paid me about 6,000, 7,000 rand for my pension fund those years. So I had the money to buy some, some furniture. And then a a lot of years later, that was basically early 2000, 2003, I had a call and a letter back from them. They employed people to see if there was a spin-off on my pension fund. Mm -hmm. I said to my wife, I said, no, man. You know, I took everything. Maybe I left 100 rand there. What will it be worth? Maybe a 2,000 yeah. or 1,000 now? Yeah. And they said, just send the information for us. We'll see. And I sent my information, a couple of months later, they sent me a letter, my wife ran into my, my office. You don't know, here's a letter from, from the SABC. You know how much? I said, no, maybe four, 4,000, huh? Yeah. 128,000 rand. What a miracle, I paid off my, my bond for that <laughs> 128,000. But that's yeah. what I wanna, that's example I use, compound interest. You know, the money that I left there for basically 20 or 35 years, that's the amount that it grew up. Mm. So when you start now and you invest, mm. you will might definitely reap the benefits on the end when you retire. And make sure people don't want to, the young people don't want to invest. They don't want to save. I call mm. it some of pure savings. Yeah. They rather want to buy a nice car. <laughs> it's like a car, yeah. but the car is like you only, you drive it for six months, then you got to death for five years. <laughs> then it's not lucky anymore. You can smell the leather. They like to sit in it, you know. It's, no, man, drive your old cars. This is a good thing. Save up. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to come to a, the end. And I see people, even the rich people, that's really got a lot of money. When you put money into your retirement annuities, you can't withdraw from that. Mm -hmm. And that's a lack about the retirement annuities. Because yeah. that's you, the first time that you can actually withdraw from your RA is at the age of 55. Mm. Now, that's a very good investment. Mm. Uh, one of my clients, he said to me the other day, I want to give my grandchild something. What do you think, Frick? I've got 10,000. I said, you know what? Take the 10,000 and put it in a lump sum for a, for a retirement annuity. He said, you're mad. The little one is two years old, one year old. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be only paid out in 55 years. He said, you know what it's going to be worth in 55 years. Yeah. So that, and they, nobody can cash that 10,000 in, not even the child. <laughs> because you know what? Yeah. If you put it in unit trust or endowment policies, Man, yeah. flexible. I never, when I do a, uh, a needs analysis for my clients, I never take your endowments or your unit trust portfolios in cons consideration because mm. they will cash it in, they will buy a car, they will go overseas, they'll spend it. But the retirement annuity not. And they can use a tax benefit on it. Mm. Okay, wow. That's, That's a big thing, right? Eh? Yeah, wow. <laughs> when we get to the tax side, yeah. we, you know, in the 2000, early 2000, I said to the guys when I phoned them up, and I don't say to them, listen, it's Frick Krobel here from Salam or Frick Krobel from Opium Financial Service. I said to them, you know what? It's Frick here. I'm in the removal business. What? What do you remove? Furniture. I said, no, 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 man. You got it wrong. I remove your money from the, from the receiver down to your pocket. Okay. I'm in that money. Yeah. I'm in the money business. Yeah. I remove your money from the receiver to you. Yeah. And that's what we do with the retirement annuity. Okay. Do your tax savings so that you can gain more money in your pocket mm -hmm. as to give it to the government. We don't want to give anything. I say pay the government, yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible said pay him, but not overpay him. Mm. You know what I say. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we, we're still on the topic of money though. And I think it's a very important thing. I was actually, uh, there's a book I read because uh, I, I strongly believe in building like a good relationship with money. So how would you say that you've been able to build a good relationship with money? Because I, I believe a lot of South Africans right now, we don't really have a good relationship with money, if we're being honest. You know what? Uh, it's like, I think money is maybe the same thing as with your wife. Eh? If I can pick it up my head, to build up a good relationship with your girlfriend. Yeah. And 
and with your wife. Mm. Keep it balanced. Huh? Mm. Don't, don't take your money for granted, first of all. Mm-hmm. Build that rational array. Don't f- fall in the trap for the love of money. Because I feel, think when you fall for that, that pothole in your life, you're not going to... There's a lot of people, and now we talk about money, but, but they get so greedy. If I look at the, the Steinhoff, what happened to Steinhoff, uh, Mark, Marcus, uh, Marcus Joester and, and his, his guys, it just amazes how he's, they spend money, uh, the people's money. Mm. Hmm? But that was a, that was a thing for, for greedness. Mm. I don't know if you ever read that book or uh, the, uh, the Stellenbosch Mafia. Mm. Please read that book because they talk about the, the Ruperts, Johan Rupert, and they talk about uh, G.T. Ferreira, and they talk also about um, uh, Whitey Basson that was on, on and, and, and the, they had an interview with the other day on TV with him from, from ShopRite, Checkers. Mm. You know that Whitey Basson, actually Christoph Wieser asked him to, to sell, sell your ShopRite dividends and put it into Steinhoff. He said, no, 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 he's not going to do that. Yeah. So Christoph was actually cross with, with uh, Whitey. Okay. But uh, Whitey is a couple, I mean, he's a couple of billion strong. He's, he's strong, right? Yeah. Uh, so strong that on his farm, he's got, the guys are asking, what is all these security guys? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what, you got your, his own security. I mean, they walk their offices and shotguns. He said, you know what, all the people think on his, my wife farm, my wine farm, I keep all the cash of shop right checkers. <laughs> huh? So yes, yeah. <laughs> hard work. He was also a hard worker. I think if I look at the rich people at that, that level, they people coming from nothing mm-hmm. that pay they, they work harder. Mm-hmm. If you look at the Rupert, uh, uh, Anton Rupert, and now his son uh, Johan Rupert, they thought that that uh, Johan Rupert will actually drown that whole company, yeah. but he built it up to a biggest empire. Mm-hmm. And then with Marcus that came into the on, on the scene there. When he moved to Stellenbosch, like he, there was never in, in, in the century of Stellenbosch so many Maseratis and, and Ferraris in Stellenbosch. But you know what? And that's the love of money. Mm. He spent like 85 million rand to take his, his clients to Twickenham uh, overseas, parties and, and things like sure. that. Now, never fall for the love of money. I always say, don't let money control you. You control money. Mm. Be in charge of that, yeah. and that's a good thing. Once you got that right, you got a, uh, you're already on a winning path. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, getting into wealth now, uh, growing and attaining wealth along the way. Like, what are ways to protect your wealth as a person? As was obviously like right now, our, our view, a lot of our viewers are actually like around the ages of seventeen and thirty-five, males predominantly, males. But like, what are ways for especially that group of people like to, for us to protect the wealth that we're currently growing, attaining, uh, what are some of the ways that you would say we can protect that wealth? Uh, you know, Nikubele, if I, the, you, got, you talk about between 17 and 35 age group, they're much more knowledgeable as the time when I started actually in the insurance business. Mm. Uh, if you look at the way that we move into the technology side, uh, I mean, if you look at the electric cars that's coming on the market and the drones, because I mean, uh, that's, you know, that's just amazing. I don't know what's going to happen in the next five or 10 years when we sit here again, maybe. But because, I mean, maybe we will talk from the moon or what. <laughs> because they will send money up to the moon, like, like your other, who's our other guy with electric cars. But, um, um, you say, what can I say to the young people is, make sure they're not running into, I, I'm not a believer of crypt, cryptocurrency, I, I believe you can make money there, if you, but I don't actually sell cryptocurrency. I like rather to be in control and uh, do my survey mm. on a company like Alan Gray. Mm. Why? Because Alan Gray and, and you can actually take the coronations as well. They're the biggest like, fund managers in South Africa at the moment, to my opinion. But they do the research. Before they invest into a company, they make sure that that specific company is a solid company. So my job is to find that fund manager that's solid, the PSG group, uh, to make sure 
that the money I'm going to take from my client and even you guys in the young group make sure that you don't throw it away. It's hard working money. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you work hard, even if it's 100 rand or 100,000 rand a month. I mean, it's hard working money. You don't want to lose it tomorrow. You want to make sure it's, it's building up. But also don't be so conservative and put it in the money market situation that the inflation will eat it up. Mm -hmm. That's a different scenario. Okay. Because a lot of people that say, listen, you know what? I can't take this up and down in the market. It's a volatile market we, we in. Mm -hmm. huh? You know, Tiger would say, uh, if you swing your golf, you don't swing so hard on the, on, on the, uh, the tee off that you will lose the ball, but make sure your swing is, 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 is worth like an ease. Yeah. And the same with your money. Mm. Huh? Mm. Ease it into to the felt there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, so uh, you, you spoke about investment portfolios earlier on, but your, your job is to find or to help somebody build a... a, a, a a proper portfolio, if I can put it like that. So, like, what are some of like the? Um, how does one actually go about building a strong portfolio, investment portfolio, if I can put it like that? Right. You know, if we look at now, let's start from the beginning. Let's say the young people, mm -hmm. they started to work, mm. basically. Now we talk about investments. I think when we say investments, it's not just money-wise. Mm -hmm. It's investing into your career. Mm -hmm. It's investing your time, right? So let's start from the scratch now. You know what, when I start to work, I must make sure that um, all, my, all my things, my belongings is safely secured. Because I mean, look what, just to look back what, what's happening, that's why you've got short-term insurances. You've got cover on your properties yeah, and your cars. A lot of people say, oh, I buy a car, you know, I don't, I don't worry to, to cover that under the insurance side. But look at the, the houses that the guys lost now in KZN with the floods. So you have to make sure that my property is secure. That's my investment. Mm. I have to look after my investment. And that, the cheapest way to, to insure yourself is to, look, to buy a policy, to buy insurance policy. Because the insurance policy will, first of all, I'm now my first job. You know, I don't actually need a life cover because I've got a girlfriend and she doesn't want that million rent or whatever. But I need an income protector. What will happen if I get sick for seven days? Or maybe what will happen now with COVID, what we're running into the pandemic? What will happen if I'm off my job for six months? So you know what? There's a lot of your, your sick leave pay. Well, maybe three days when a month or whatever or, or a year that you get sick leave pay. Your sick leave pay will not be enough. So if you're going to be sick off sick for six months, I've got debts to pay, I've got my bond to pay, I've got the cars to pay. So invest in yourself that you can make sure mm. you've got an income cover to protect yourself that. And then, I mean, that's still, you can recover from a sickness bed, but what will happen if I lose my arm or my leg or I can't work actually? Now we talk about a long scenario. We know, maybe talk about the next 40 years. So make sure you've got a lump sum disability or a cover that can give you income. You know, I've got a, I had a couple of uh, cancer claims now, the last couple of months. The, my one client, to give you an example, she, a beautiful lady, she's 30 years, 38 years old, well uh, knowledgeable, uh, she's a, she got a doctor's degree in law, she works in Switzerland at the moment, and first of all, she had a double, last year, double mistake to me. And um, that's great. It is bad for a beautiful girl like that. Uh. Mm. So, uh, and then, beginning of the year, she had cancer mm. in her arm. And you know what? She's earning 3.2 million a year. I mean, for that age, it's, it's, a big mm. it's a lot of money. But luckily, you know what? I paid her out about 14 million for cancer, three disease cancer, mm. different cancers. Mm. And... The first cancer we handled about nine million, and now I paid it out for the second cancers. Mm. So, and I'm busy working on our income protector side now as well. Uh, that we will cover up to the age of, of uh, 66. I specifically work with the professional guys. We call it the Professional Provenance Society. They built up a uh, it's, it's a platform for guys that's got a four-year degree qualification, your honours or masters or whatever, and they protect. They've been in the market from 1942 already uh, in the market for years. It's specifically to cover you up when you, when you lose that. 
I've got a, a second claim of two fishers. The one is my neighbor actually now as well. Uh, he, they're going to pay him out 177 tax free. Uh, he's 53 years old. His back has problems, especially when you use. You know what? A dentist, if he loses his hand, he can't operate anymore. Mm. Or just a finger. Mm. So you have to cover yourself up with that. Mm. So invest in yourself. Yeah, make sure yeah. that, that the start point start right. Mm. Sure. So obviously there comes risk with all of this, of course, right? With managing people's money and all that. So how do you go about managing uh, risk? You know, when it comes to risk, you, I always take it and I work it, it's now somewhere a thumb sucking one, work out of a scale of 100. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for instance, you want to invest. You're 20 years old. I said, right, take your 20 years, deduct it from 100. You can go about 80, 85 percent to the stock market. Okay. Aggressively. Mm -hmm. The next other 20, you have to basically put it more secure and balance into your portfolio. When I'm 70, ne? 70 percent, I can only go about 30 percent to the stock market mm -hmm. in that specific portfolio. Because it senses for me to say my, my 70 year old client to say, listen, let me take that 10 million, I'm going to put it on the money market for 4%. I, uh, I mean, the, you know, by inflation, I would say the inflation actually may, may be higher, but the inflation running about 7 to 8% at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that guy, in five years, it will tow up his, 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 his investment of 10 million. He will maybe sit with about 7 million. Mm -hmm. Rather invest that, the 30%. To the stock market mm -hmm. and you balance it out more stable and, and more balanced so that at least you can a bit of give him an eight mm percent -hmm. growth in the market mm -hmm. or a nine percent growth but it's still I, I manage the risk so i make sure and i sit with my client first of all we, when we do that type of investment i i do a risk profile on the client to see what is what is his his profile maybe your profile is different from from uh, other guys profile uh, every guy's got a different risk profile, mm -hmm. you know. The one guy will go more shares and the other guy will do more this and that. But yeah, find out what your risk profile is and then I start to, according to that, I start to build up a portfolio. Mm -hmm. Then I would say, listen, we're going to go so much into uh, the stock market, so much into properties, so much into the money market <coughs> scenario. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, you see also, uh, I know uh, mm. diversification is something that's really important in the line of work that you do, correct? Yeah, the diversification is, you know, look, I'm 68, I'm going to go to 70, but I'm aggressive as well. So you can't always just for myself. Uh, I'm in the China fund at the moment. I like to invest into China. But I'm, I'm getting hammered now at the moment. Uh, my investment is about 33% off. Mm. <clears throat> so you get no color fright when you, when you look at that. Because all climate, all the climates, the, the, I mean, if you look at the floods, you have to, maybe you want to go to a different country where there's no global pro problems there. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that's, that's <coughs> diversification. Make sure you... Uh, spin it there, uh, aggressively there, or a little bit there. Uh, you know, you, you move your money around. I like to be still, not all my money because, but I like to take about 30% of my cash and, and, and move it. Because you can you imagine what will happen with China? Uh, uh, in the, I had a, a clip, a video clip from, from, from China last, uh, last year with my guys that's investing there. And you can't believe what actually is going on there. You know, they, they launched their train station that's a 65 rugby fields big. Sure. They reckon they want to move 200 million people in the next five years around in China with, with the airports. Uh, mm. You can't believe what's going on there. I mean, if you look at all the cranes and things, it's not like in South Africa. They, what they call it, all the contractors, they, they, they call it a bed warmer. Okay. They, the one guy sleeps, the other guy gets up and he works. And when he gets back, the other guy gets up and he's in the same bed he sleeps. Huh? They, they, they did a, a, a development in South Africa and they, they asked the guys, most of the guys quoted them about 18 months, a year and a half to finish the job. Mm -hmm. and, and the Chinese guys came in and said, listen, we will do this job in six months. I said, no, you can't. <laughs> the, you, you must know there's yeah. penalties. Yeah. They finished that job. They said, listen, but we want to bring our own guys in. They finished that job three weeks before the end time. 
sure. the expiring time. That is a different, and, and still, you know, what, what I like about Jonah, they still plant trees and flowers. Mm. So they look at the environmental, the, the, they don't just kill the trees and what. We in South Africa, we just build buildings, no, 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 <laughs> no roads. We don't even look at the, the roads, that's why we got all the potholes and things. Yeah, that's a different, we don't look at, at uh, uh, the, to develop the proper thing in South Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. You, you've actually got like over 29 years of experience right now. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I know this might be a bit of a tricky one to answer, but like what have been some of the most defining moments over this 29 years for you? Uh, you know, maybe it's not the answer you want looking for. <laughs> Uh, to lose a client. Okay. That's heartbreaking. Mm. You know, as I said in, in earlier in my conversations with you guys, my clients is like my family members. Mm. I haven't got a client. I've got a big family mm. in Opium Financial Services. I lost uh, one of my attorneys. I mean, I came from that guy from 1992 in his, in his business. I saw him grow, uh, grew up. I saw him, he, what they invested into airplanes and mm. they, they were huge, making a lot of money and then all of a sudden everything went sour. Boah, right? I prayed for that client of mine in his office and he was building it back again. I mean, that's, that's what I like. Eh? Yeah. You don't fall down on your knees. They say when you fall up, it's the luckiest thing to stand up again. It's tough to fall, but yeah. you know, what a pleasure to stand up and make a success of it. Mm. And... Unfortunately, he had a, he's 53 years, 54 years old, always, he had a small little farm, also he was farming in Portis, mm -hmm. and two years ago, I had a call from his office, he passed away. Mm. The geezer shocked him next to his property, and Shock. his wife is a doctor, she's giving classes at Turkey, a professor, and, uh, and she's, I mean, devastated, I mean, uh, they were all planning to basically in two years time to retire, to go to mm. the farm and do all yeah. that. And that's hard for That is to me, that, is, that to me is, 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 is tough times. And then you have to work. And luckily, on the things that you plan in the guy's life, mm. then it, uh, it's, it's a sad story, but also a good story because luckily his portfolio was in such a place his life insurances, his, his, his business insurances, everything to cover the family up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, sure. That is that is that is cases, and it's not. That is, was one of the examples in my very earlier careers. I had an engineer. I did his will. I went on leave, and, and two days later, I mean, the guy actually he was at Dunlop. He was burned in one of the furnaces. I mean, ninety-five. Uh, uh, wounds he burned basically in the furnace and he passed away. That's the things. And then yeah. you, yeah, I can tell you many stories yeah. of that. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get people that uh, committed suicide mm. in my business. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a um, it's a sad story. It's a That's sad, yeah. good stories yeah. and sad stories. Yeah. And then I got the good guys that they retired and a ship. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. That that is a nice part of it. Yes. You know? <laughs> no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um. So what is the importance of networking and why is it so necessary? The reason why I'm asking you that is because what I've realized oh. is that um, you're somebody who's uh, dealing with, you networking a lot, because obviously you mentioned earlier on, you're somebody who goes out to find fund managers, uh, all these guys, you mentioned all these companies that you're working with, so I can believe there's a lot of networking that happens in your line of business. You know, networking, I said to my staff the other day, that's the core cool of the insurance business. Mm. You know, with the Poppy Act now these days, I can't even take the phone, pick it up and phone you because it's against the law. I mean, in my earlier days, I mean, I phoned people up and said, listen, well, let's talk about the professional problem in society. Are you a member there? No, no, man, here, come and tell me about it. Today, you can't do that anymore. But you know, word of mouth. Mm. This, mm. if you're a marketer and you sell yourself, even in your businesses, in the word of mouth, I said to my daughter, you know what, you gym, you go to the gym. And he said to the guy, she had an accident, she dropped a weight on her foot last year. 
And you can just say to the guy, listen, yes, look what happened to me. But you know what? Luckily, I'm insured for my foot, basically. I've got medical aid. Are you all right? Are you okay? Mm. You know what? Look what happened to me. Are your portfolio okay? Don't you think we can look at your insurance? So, and, and today, you know, networking in the earlier days, and still today, if you speak to a client, say, listen, Manier, you know, I, I manage about 10 million of yours. Mm -hmm. I've got your life portfolio. I've do your investments. Mm. Have you got a friend that's maybe got a need out mm. there? Mm. I'm sure he's got a friend, that, that, definitely. Mm. Because if you would take, get one guy or two guys, those two guys give me another four guys. Mm. And those other four guys will give me eight guys. Yeah. That's networking. You know, many years back, there was a guy, uh, I can't remember his name anymore. He's in Australia at the moment. He did a, a lot of road shows to develop the brokers out there. He was a very professional speaker. Mm. He said what he, he advises. When you get to a client, take a hundred rand bull out, put it on the table, and say to the man, when I finish here, yeah, and I didn't ask you for one of your friends, you take that hundred rand. <laughs> so you make sure before you leave, because that's a, the biggest downfall of all the, all the insurance brokers when you start off is to, you do the job and then you just come, you do sort of, no, I'm not going to ask this guy for, a, for, for one of his friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, networking is very important. Uh, but you have to do it in a very smart way. Okay. Now, because also, you know, people are very skeptical to give out, say, so listen, go and see my friend there. Mm. Because now, if he don't like you, do you think of my friend will like him? <laughs> That's going to involve our friendships and things. Of course. Of so course. I'd, I'd rather say, listen, play, play your off what you do. Mm -hmm. Tell them what happened in, in life. Mm. If, you, if you like what I tell you now about examples, I can scare you so much. When you walk out here, you say, listen, Frick, bring those paper, I'll sign a life policy. Because I'm worried. Uh, yeah. uh, that's what you must do. Uh. Mm. Talk about the man on the, at the cafe. Mm. Say, listen, you know what? I'm worried about this cafe. You've got such a lot. You've got a beautiful cafe here. I buy bread and cold drink here. But you know what? Are you insured for the flats that we're picking up at the moment? Mm. You see, there's so much... Uh, uh, things that's happening now at the moment. Are you sure? Are, are your product? Are your products insured? Pro product liability. What happens if a, a, a guy walks in here, he buy a piece of bread and he's got food poison, mm. and he sue you for that? Have you got enough money to cover that guy? That's product liability. Mm. Huh? So I can actually give the guy a product liability. Or at a big firm, they manufacture oil and petrol and all those things. They we call about pollution liability. When they drop a tanker down there, you, can you imagine when those all run into the environmental mm. in the rivers and things? Big time. Mm. Clean up liabilities. Mm. Uh, things. And it's big time. When that claims come in, it's like a million or two million claim. Mm. And then for those, my stomach goes, whoo, whoo, <laughs> because I sit here yeah. and I have to make sure that that thing has been correctly insured. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I'm in there. But luckily, I also got a, a, a professional indemnity cover mm -hmm. uh, of five million. Mm. So at least, if I really make a mistake accidentally, <laughs> I'm also covered. <laughs> so you have to cover yeah, yourself up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's networking. That's basically but networking, networking is basically yeah. when you walk out your network. Mm. You know, when you pick that camera up, you network. Huh? As you get into your car, you network. Mm. How did you pick up your girlfriend? Networking. <laughs> <laughs> networking. Huh? Yeah. 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 Perfect, beautiful, very beautiful right there. Uh, so earlier on, you actually touched on saving, uh, why it's important for, for people to save, uh, you know. Uh, so what is the importance of like the saving culture, per se? You know, if I look, as I said earlier on as well, uh, unfortunately, the young professional guys, uh, they want to look smart. They want to operate smart. When they leave varsity, they think they're smart. But they've got so much to learn still. When they can buy the quickest thing, if they can buy a smart car, a nice laptop, a nice watch, they think they made. That's not the things. Uh, things I'd rather give me a guy that's got 10 rand or 20 rand in his savings account and he walk on his, or he ride his bicycle. <laughs> that's a man that's looking for the future. Hmm. So you have to, you know, there's an old, uh, thing you know when we started to work in for the government institutions those years there was a pension fund on the table 
So that company will take 7.5% of my income and, and they will put 7.5% of their income into a pension fund. Mm. So that pension fund will give you a life cover, a disability cover, group scheme, mm. and also a saving. But now we're all independent. We, I mean, we're entrepreneurs. I mean, I don't think the government, I don't want to work for the government anymore. Or institution, you don't want to work for Eskimo or Transnet or those guys. Uh, they, I mean, even their pension funds is like sc scarier. But make sure that you get into that culture of, I start work, I'm going to contribute. That's how I started to, to my young professional, my candidate attorneys. I said, if you've been in the, in, in the, in the government side, they will take seven and a half. Let's take seven and a half percent of your income. Doesn't matter what you earn. Mm -hmm. If you earn ten thousand, work on that seven and a half percent. That's maybe seven fifty, seven hundred and fifty rand. Mm -hmm. That's what you're gonna contribute into a, a policy. Mm -hmm. And we built a life policy, income protector, and a saving side on it. Mm -hmm. If you earn five thousand rand a month, take seven and a half percent of the five thousand. Huh? Mm -hmm. So doesn't matter if you earn a hundred thousand, I take seven and a half percent of the no, but that's not enough. You know, in the old days, I used to work on, on basically 15% of savings. Today, you have to contribute about 20% of your savings. And that's how, why the government actually allows that, and it pushes the rates up for, for retirement annuities. You know, a retire, as I said earlier on, a retirement annuity is a vehicle where you can get the tax savings, he said to the government, you can contribute 27.5% of your income to a retirement annuity to a max of 350,000 rand a month, a year. So that means it's just under the 30,000 rand a, a month that you can contribute. But if you fall in that bracket, you get 45% back from the receiver. Hmm. I mean, it's nearly half of it. And the lesser you earn, you maybe earn 250,000 rand a year. You get 30%. They will work on your marginal rate. That's why I forces my staff to contribute to a retirement annuity so that they can get a tax relief. And that's where we're in the vehicle. We, we move money from the receiver. Mm. But make sure that's the best vehicle to save for and use that, that opportunity. You know, I can go to, I'm going to give you, like, there's a couple of points that I want to, actually uh, compare for, for, from a retirement annuity uh, okay. perspective to an endowment policy, or even to your share side or your unit trust portfolios. Remember, you t on your shares and your unit trust portfolios, basically, what's the difference between a shares and a unit trust portfolio? The only thing is a, a share side, I can buy sussels. I can buy NASPES. If I want to buy NASPES, I go on the market to buy NASPES, all right? <clears throat> a unit trust portfolio, I've got a couple of shares, that I buy in that specific. If I go to Satrix 40, it's a unit trust portfolio, mm -hmm. they work on the top 40 companies' uh, shares in, in South Africa. And when it falls, the one falls out, they get another top 40. In. So always, you will always invest in the top 40. Mm -hmm. uh, the MECI fund is a worldwide fund, but it's a, it's a big fund. It's not one share. The difference there from a retirement in you to you tax on your capital gain, you tax on your dividends, and you tax on the interest on those things. So, but in, in a retirement annuity, the difference there, it's not part of your estate. So remember when you pass away, the, the, they will come in, the curator, and say, listen, or the master, uh, to say, listen, three and a half, four percent is your executive fees. That's to, to wrap up your estate to take it to the master and all that. That's your executive fees to pay. But your retirement annuity is not part of that. Uh, you're not getting taxed for your interest, dividends, or capital gain in your retirement part. Mm. So, I mean, you already save about 3% on your savings there. Now, if you get from the receiver back your 40, 45%, right, plus you get an additional 3%, you talk about 48% growth in that portfolio. I mean, I'm not even on the market yet. Yeah. Now I get the market and I link it up to my Alan Gray's or my coronations for the last 14 years, uh, Alan Gray take it or coronation, they were running for 50% growth in the market. Added on top of that, it's 50, 63% growth. That's sure. good. That's yeah. good money. Why yeah. you want to play Bitcoin and say, listen, oh, I'm going to make 200% profits mm. in the Bitcoin, 
But tomorrow you look at it, oh yes, I lost 200%. Mm. Huh? Mm. No, I like to see things. I like to invest. I like to search. And you guys are, uh, you, uh, you, you want to, you're neskirach. You want to see what's going on there. That's why you go, go on Google and you, what you will search, Alan Gray. I want to see what his company is. Yeah. I want to see Resco. I want to see PSG. Mm. I want to see uh, basically Salomon, their portfolios or whatever. What are they? How strong is the company? Mm. But can you do it with Bitcoin? Can you Google Bitcoin and see, I mean, where, did, where is this money coming from? I know it's going up and down. There's not even, they're not, and, and China stopped Bitcoin now. Huh? Mm -hmm. You can't buy Bitcoin out of China. Mm. Uh, it's not controlled for me. Yeah. Today there's money, tomorrow there's nothing. <laughs> I know. I'd rather be with a company that I know at least I can have something. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. You've really dropped a lot of wisdom. You've shared a lot of wisdom with us. Uh, yo, yeah. <laughs> so many nuggets that you've dropped. And I oh. hope you guys are listening and taking in what Frick Hobl is saying. So you've been around for 29, over 29 years now. Okay, can I ask this question? What has been the worst investment you've made? Uh, I just want to push it down there. The worst investment? Yes. Over the span of your career. <laughs> you guys, you're going to maybe laugh. Yeah. Um, maybe on my motor vehicles. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Look, I had all the fancy cars yeah. from, you name it. I yeah. was... Uh, a BM, a Mercedes driver. Mm -hmm. I was a Porsche driver at a Porsche. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think a car is not an investment. It's nice to have, scheme to have. But surely from point A to point B, I can just do as well with the Hyundai as with a Porsche. Mm -hmm. It gives you that kick mm -hmm. in the mark, <laughs> that uh, adrenaline kick, you know. Yes. But yeah, my, uh, if you look at the stock market wise, um, uh, my worst investment on the stock market was basically, there was a couple of, <laughs> of things. Um, what was that one share that I bought? Oh, I must now recall it back. Uh, sure, I can't come to that. No. Uh, the other thing is I bought the Rainbow Chickens. My first year was for, for 17 cents. Okay. And when it was 11 cents, I got out, I said, now I'm losing. And now it's up, it's about 300 rand a share price. Uh, <laughs> uh, worst investment, yeah. you know, yeah, I've, I've, I had a, one of my girls on the stock market, because you had to have a, a broker on the stock market as well, too, where you mm. was dealing with all your, your shares. When I want to buy, just pull up the phone and say, listen, buy that shares and that shares. That was nice in the, in the earlier times, you know what? I can drive in, up to Pretoria and say, listen, to my girl in the stock market, they just, I want 100,000 rand of Sassel shares and she will buy it immediately. My money's not even in there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made quite a bit of money there also. I sold before I actually put money into my account. Okay. I bought, I bought my first Mercedes with my stock market shares. Yeah. But that was nice. But these days you can't. I have to have that 100,000, 200,000 rand in my, uh, my account before she will buy shares for me. Mm. So, uh, but I've given money, 100,000, to a stockbroker. Okay. And he got that portfolio and he can manage it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, he's got the bright ideas of that. So eventually I walk away with that about 20,000. I lost 80,000 sure. because he had the long, wrong calls. Mm -hmm. Every time he called the wrong thing out there. So, <laughs> so my advice is not listen to other people, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the stock market. Do your research work before you go into the stock market. You know, and it's a nice... Uh, it's a nice play field to buy. I don't know if you guys doing in this, uh, invest on in the stock market, but you have to monitor. If you like you take Sassels or if you take any share on Naspas on there, you have to monitor it and see when it's the right time, when it's the points or your highlights to buy in there. Uh, and they also say, don't when you're, when you're angry or things, don't buy shares because you do the wrong decisions there. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Uh, another thing is, you know, if you bought... Uh, Capitec. When Capitec started off, I like Yanni, Yanni Maton's story of, of investment. You, if you ever got a chance, read his life story, Yanni Maton, where his partners 
got him actually out of the business and really got back into the business and he made a couple of billions in the business. Mm. Uh, but Capitec, if you, I think Capitec started up in 95. If you bought Capitec and invested about 100,000, you would have said it was about 120 million now runabout. Mm. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. That's how Capitec went up in price. Mm -hmm. But it's risky also because, yeah, I mean, that time when, when Capitec, the African bank nearly went under mm -hmm. because it was a loan bank. Yeah. But Capitec is performing very well. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing is, I'm looking out for Discovery because Discovery, I didn't go. And I don't want to say I'm advising you to buy Discovery shares, but it could be worthwhile because he's also involved in China mm. with the Vitality package. And okay. you know, if the Chinese guys is going to buy on that idea, I think it can be good for, for Discovery, for, yeah, yeah, for the share price. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a very good conversation. It's been enlightening as well, like very educational as well. I've learned so much right now. And I hope you guys have learned as well. I'm sitting here with Philip Kobler from OPM. I will leave all these details in the description below so that you guys can reach out if you guys are trying to get, uh, obviously you've heard what they've heard or what you deal with right now. So those who are interested can reach out to you and uh, see how they can get into business with you and all that. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we're not there to make you healthy, wealthy. We're there to plan your lifestyle. Thank you very much. Don't get unfit, get fitter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you very much, guys. It's me, we'll be little man from Top Chain of South Africa. And this was another episode of Market Masters. I thank you, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you, guys.